Good morning or evening viewers. I am Preeti Priya Darshan, a fresher from Ceramic Department, is honored to present you a presentation on the topic Ceramics Made with Clay. The word ceramic is derived from the Greek which means of pottery or for pottery. So that is why I have chosen this topic to present you. In this slide, I'll be telling you about different types of clay in pottery. First of all, clay is a natural material created by weathered rocks. It is soft, malleable and will permanently harden if baked at higher temperatures. Make it practical material for making tableware. There are three main types of clay for pottery. These are earthenware, stoneware and porcelain. Earthenware fires at lower temperatures and can have an earthy look. Stoneware fires at mid to high temperatures and is often buff or tan in color. Porcelain fires at high temperatures and is usually pale gray or white. In this particular slide, we'll know more about what is earthenware clay. Earthenware clays are fired at 804 to 1154 degrees Celsius. That is why they are known as low fire clays. They are usually red or orange in color. This is because it has a high content of iron oxide, which is essentially rust. However, earthenware clay can be also of yellow, white, tan or buff in color. Some earthenware clay can look quite smooth and refined while it has been fired. However, it has a reputation of looking quite earthier, more coarse, rustic than other types of clay in pottery. The reason for this is that once it has been fired, it becomes more porous than uh, the other clay bodies. Clay is usually made up of clay particles and those after those clay particles are fired, they come quite close to each other. And also the glass produced by the clay body during fire fills up the spaces that are between the clay. So the clay particles come together, the glass also bonds the clay particles together and gives the pottery strength. This is called the process of vertification. Earthenware clay is more porous than other types of clay because it's less dense and less strong. As a result, earthenware will chip and break more readily than stoneware or porcelain. Those are like other types of clay. As you can see here, uh, the earthenware has chipped and broken apart. To make the earthenware clay waterproof and therefore more suitable for dinnerware, it needs to be glaze fired. However, because of earthen clay lacks the glass forming ingredients to become fully vertified and it cannot withstand the same high temperature during glaze firing. If you fire at a low temperature or uh, like not low temperature at a mid or high temperature, it will break or melt as it is a low fire clay. Uh, in the environment, over the years, deposit of clay minerals form uh, as rocks are gradually eroded. These clay minerals can gather at a point where they are formed. They are known as primary clay. Uh, or the minerals can be transported to a different location and settled there. That is known as secondary clay. Because secondary clay has been transported usually by agents uh, like water, it will pick up the sediments and particles which comes on its root. As a result, secondary clay is less pure than primary clay. So earthenware is one of those secondary clay. In this slide, we'll know what is stoneware clay. Stoneware clays are normally fired at higher temperature than earthenware clays. That is somewhere between 2010 to 2370 Fahrenheit. Stoneware clay comes in different colors, mostly gray when it is moist. Uh, the color varies from pale gray to quite deep gray in color. Stoneware is tough and quite non-porous. That is why it is used by commercial manufacturers to make dinnerware. Stoneware uh, is used commercially because of its refined particles. As a result, the fired product has a very smooth and consistent look. However, the stoneware used by potterers to make pottery by hand has often speckled look. This is partly to do with the impurities in the clay. That is why uh, 
gorg is added to it to improve its performance gorg is basically clay which has been fired and grounded up into fine particles so that uh, it can give a nice texture to the clay so stoneware clay produces more glass than earthenware when, when it is being fired it is less porous than earthenware and makes it more suitable for like preparing dinnerware water holding vessels like vases cups um this is partly to do with that it is less porous and more to do with its strength vitrified pottery is uh, stronger than non vitrified pottery because the vitrified pottery uh, like uh, when it is being fired the clay particles come together and produces more glass so it becomes stronger and denser than the non fired um, uh, uh, that is the non fired clay so that is non vitrified pottery Uh, so stoneware is less vulnerable to chip and break than earthenware as we saw earlier the earthenware pottery chipped and broke but stoneware do doesn't uh, like earthenware clay stoneware is also a secondary clay however broadly speaking uh, stoneware clay is uh, a mixture of feldspars quartz and ball clay ball clay is also another type of clay uh some stoneware clay feels like very smooth and silky to use but however when gorg is added it becomes more coarse and gritty uh, coarse and gritty in the sense it becomes uh, like very grainy so yeah in this slide we we'll learn about porcelain clay porcelain clay is also referred to as kaolin clay kaolin is very pure kind of white clay which is also referred to as china clay kaolin is actually the primary ingredient in making a wider range of porcelain types of clay porcelain is a high fire type of clay that is uh, it fires at temperature 20 32 fahrenheit and upwards uh, when it is moist porcelain clay is usually either very pale gray in color or white or off white color once fired porcelain is normally white and can have a very translucent appearance the particles that porcelain is made are very fine and refined because uh, they are so fine that the number of clay particles in porcelain is higher than the other types of clay that is stoneware and earthenware for this reason porcelain can be pulled and shaped into uh, very thin and delicate forms talking more about porcelain clay porcelain clay when fired to maturity has a very low porosity which means it absorbs very little or maybe no water it is usually very dense and hard porcelain has a capacity to look very delicate and refined but it is also very tough and non porous so its uses are many and varied uh it can be used for detailed sculptural artist work as you can see in one of the pictures um in addition to this because it is so hard it can be used for other industrial and medical applications uh, because of its toughness it's used in dentistry and mechanics and porcelain feels very smooth and refined to touch however it has a reputation of uh means for being challenging to use porcelain is not particularly plastic kaolin clay has low plasticity so here plasticity means when you add water uh the clay becomes quite loose and then uh, very flexible to use so when you add water to kaolin clay uh it doesn't become like very flexible to use that is it has low plasticity and because kaolin is the cre means the key ingredient to porcelain clay a lot of porcelain clay are less plastic too so many of the kaolin clay is like very tough to use by contrast ball clay has high plasticity so when ball clay is added to porcelain clay that is more amount of ball clay is added to porcelain clay it uh, it becomes quite useful and uh, it can be shaped into different uh, vessels talking about the manufacturing process the manufacturing of clay ceramics takes place in these five uh, major steps that is the mixing of clay the jiggering slip casting glazing and then firing so we'll know more about it in the next slides 
Here we'll be talking about the industrial process of making clay ceramics. First talking about mixing of clay. The clay arrives by truck or rail in powder form. The powder is moistened with water and mixed in a huge tank with paddle called a blunger. As you can see in the picture, multiple spindles mix and remix the clay in order to evenly distribute the water all inside the clay. As this uh, point, the slurry is about 30% water and 70% clay. The next uh, slurry is filter pressed. A device presses the slurry in between bags um, or filters to force out the excess water. After forcing out the excess water, the resulting clay, it, it becomes very cake-like consistency and rather dry than the earlier slurry and it has about 20% water and because of that, uh, means the clay is pulled into uh, a plug meal in which the clay is chopped into fine pieces. Uh, this chopping de-airs the clay as uh, the pump sucks out air pockets and that are exposed by this process. The clay sorry the cake is then formed into cylinders that is now ready to be molded or formed into various shapes. So jiggering is a way means the fastest way to produce a regular hollow pot uh, by using a jiggering machine as you can see. Thus the hollow ware such as vessels uh, is largely made on the jiggering ma machines. A metal arm then comes down to the wet clay cylinder forcing it against the interior wall of the plaster mold that is uh, the vessel you have made. Uh, so that uh, it gives a really nice shape. The plaster mold with the wet clay inside is then lifted off the machine and set in dryer. As the clay heats up uh, then dries slowly the new wet clay pulls away from the plaster mold uh, that can be easily removed. Um, so the machine takes the rough edges of the mold molded piece. Uh, the, uh, the clean uh, the cleaned piece is then placed on a continuously moving belt which is led into the tunnel dryers. The tunnel dryers heats the pieces and reduces the water content that is below 1% before glazing and firing the final product. Talking about slip casting pottery that deals with very delicate or intricate design, intricate in the sense very complex design is often formed by slip casting. A pourable slip or slurry is poured into the two part um, plaster mold with the excess is poured out and the slip is permitted to stiffen and dry as you can see. Uh, there's a mold in between that is the two part mold and then uh, uh, like the slurry is poured into it and then it is allowed to siphon or dry. The plaster mold sucks up the excess water and helps uh, hasten the drying process. Hasten means fasten actually. The plaster mold is open when the clay is stiff enough. As you can see the plaster mold is opened and then a vessel glass like vessel has been taken out. The piece is clean. Um, of rough edges and seams from the mold. The slip cast greenware is ready for drying. Now uh, this molds will be taken for drying in heated dryers so that it will uh, form a stiff product. Talking about glazing, after the pieces has been dried in heated dryers, they are ready for glazing. So the pieces may be entirely covered with one color glaze uh, by being running under the waterfall of glaze that completely coats each piece uh, or may be sprayed with glaze. Deep hollowware such as vases have to be flushed with glaze by hands to ensure they are completely coated uh, with glaze as you can see in the picture. Glazes are generally applied to a very less thickness. Uh, other pieces may be more decoratively glazed. Uh, some pieces are printed with screen printing. Others have decoratively applied by hand by using many different types of colors and glazes. Uh, maybe the lines, concentric rings uh, to show very intricate design and others may be painted by hand. After glazing comes the process firing. Clints may be heated by 
gas, coal, or electricity clean is that as you can see over here. Um, one large production potter uses tunnel kilns fired with natural gas. New furnaces run at higher temperature than old kilns and require short firing time running about 2300 Fahrenheit. The pots remain in the clean for about five hours, thus allowing the factories to move pieces more quickly through production. Clean changes the glaze into glass-like coating, uh, which makes the pot virtually improvise to liquid. Many glaze require that the green way where we fired once and made into a bisque or dull white hard body then glazed and fired again however this is not necessary with some production glazes the unglazed foot that is the bottom of the pottery is polished on a machine with the cleaning pad uh, the piece is then placed in a bin and is sent for packing ready to ship out for sale so talking about the quality control, uh, this we were talking about the industrial process of creating clay ceramics. So all the materials that are brought are uh, actually checked by the company established uh, standards. Clay must contain the ingredients required by the product and ordered by the company. Uh, glazes must be as pure as possible and are checked for correct shade viscosity, gravity, clean temperature must be carefully monitored with heat cones and thermocouples. It is actually um, the device to use uh, to measure the temperature in the kiln and each human involved in the production uses their eyes to monitor against the inferior products. Talking about the byproducts or the waste that comes out uh, after this after this process, there are actually no harmful byproducts resulting uh, from the production of the pottery. Clay scraps and uh, imperfect pieces produced of um, the jiggering machine or from slip casting may be remixed and can be reused. Glazes must be lead free required by the Food and Drug Administration that is FDA and glazes are tested in-house to assure the FDA that they contain neither cadmium nor lead. All glazes must be touched by human hand are not harmful in raw state.